What's going on guys? So today I'm going to give you guys an update on my Planet Reef Tank rack. So starting off at the very bottom of the rack, uh, this is our sump and this is where a lot of the macroalgae is grown. Currently I have a lot of shadow growing in the sump uh, location and a lot of just biomedia um, floating along the side here. The one thing that's a little bit different is I've been trying to harvest a lot of the shadow to try to split um, half of it shadow and half of it uh, dragon's breath. Uh, I just started like this week to try to throw in some of the dragon's breath. Um, you'll see uh, as we go up to the very top uh, in terms of why I'm doing that, uh, the top isn't growing um, the dragon's breath as well as I thought it would have. So I'm trying to grow a lot of that in the sump area. The other thing is I've been trying to keep track of some of the parameters. Uh, I've been trying to be a little bit more proactive in terms of monthly uh, measurements of them. The last few times I've checked, uh, a couple of the parameters actually went out of whack. Uh, I've been kind of dialing that in and kind of starting to do more of a weekly dosage of certain things like al alkalinity. Uh, the other thing I've been watching a lot in terms of is phosphate just for algae growth and whatnot. Uh, for the most part, the um, reactor plus the macroalgae is doing a really good job keeping the phosphate down. Then moving up to the middle section of this, this is where all the corals are grown currently. So let's start off with the bubble tip anemone. I still do have my Colorado uh, Sunburst. It's doing, you know, fairly well uh, after almost another close encounter with it just kind of almost dwindling and dying again. So I think the cause of this is probably mixing uh, a rainbow uh, anemone in the tank. And for the most part, it was doing really well for maybe six months. And then it started to kind of deteriorate. And once I quickly removed the rainbow bubble tip anemone, um, this thing pretty much bounce back pretty fast. A lot of people say, you know, keep your uh, Colorado Sunburst uh, alone pretty much in the setup or in the system just because there is like uh, chemical warfare. And for the most part, I think it's probably a, a true statement just because, you know, I tried to mix it. It did well for a couple months. And then, you know, after a couple months, it would just kind of not do well. So uh, definitely try to keep those split. The only other anemone that I've seen people kept, you know, fairly healthy or well uh, together with is uh, the mock inferno and also some CC supernovas right now I just have the inferno uh, which is on the other side and both anemones are doing really well of course I am paying attention and just watching them both just to make sure that they can coexist uh, in the same system now I did add some new zoas into this um, set up I actually had some time to do some fragging as you can see I had some frags in the bottom here So before I only had really one which is my utter chaos. Um, I added sunny D's. I added some Rastas Also, there's a few other ones that are I guess less common in terms of like, you know They could be just named from a, a different vendor. It could be something else. I don't know uh, But there's a bunch of them over here as well what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to frag some of these guys, maybe cover the whole bottom. Since this is kind of bare bottom, I'm kind of interested to kind of just cover the whole bottom with just frags of Zoas. That would be kind of interesting to have. Uh, once this is kind of covered and multiplied, I'll add it to the other tank as well. And just kind of cover everything up with just basically coral everywhere. Of course, the clownfish are doing fairly well. And this is kind of odd, but I started with five uh, clownfish in the tank, hoping that they would kind of like just... Uh, be a group, um, but pretty much once these two kind of paired off, they kind of fought off the other ones, and for some reason, they were okay with a third clownfish being in here. So, there's a third one, kind of like the third wheel of uh, <laughs> clownfish uh, that's okay in the tank, but they would always chase the other two, and that's why I moved the other two into its own tank uh, in the living room. The one plus that kind of took off in this tank is the coralline algae on the wall. Um, ever since I started dosing um, alkalinity in the tank and keeping the calcium kind of high in the tank, it's just kind of blown up with the coralline algae, which is great and awesome. Um, so I would like to kind of, you know, get the walls kind of filled in for the most part. It's kind of almost there. Um, you kind of see it a lot more on the tanks above here. So here's one of the tanks that's supposed to be filled with plants, but for whatever reason, um, the plants are kind of getting pulled. <laughs> up by the clownfish. The clownfish will kind of just go through and just uproot some of these guys and kind of just throw them up to this uh, overflow box and just kind of like almost clog it every time. Um, as you can see, they, they already kind of pre-clogged a lot of these. Um, the other thing is I've been growing these plants here to kind of feed to the tang down in the bottom tank and it's been, you know, doing 
an amazing job in terms of just eating a lot of these uh, macroalgae. So what I'm thinking of doing is just probably growing these uh, algae out. Just let them detang, just kind of have a treat once a week or something like that. So my idea is I originally was going to keep these top tanks as just planet, you know, reef tanks. Uh, but I'm probably going to do a hybrid where I'm going to keep some plants in here and I'll probably change the lights to how some of the anemones once they start splitting. I really want to give all the clownfish an opportunity to play with the anemone, house an anemone, and just interact with anemones just because that's what they're used to and that's what they do in the wild. And I kind of feel bad for these guys up here because, you know, obviously they, they do have a nice area, a nice room to swim around in with the plants. They play with the plants and stuff like that. But for some reason, I just feel like clownfish, they just need an anemone. So in the future, once I have a few more of these anemones split, I will move the anemones up to these two uh, tanks here. And I'll just keep anemones in these tanks as well. And I'll keep a couple of plants here and there for them. And as you can see, the coralline algae up in the top tanks is just ridiculous. It's actually consumed uh, a lot of the walls on all the tanks here, which is great. Um, I'm going to try to upkeep that as much as I can just because I really love the colors of the coralline algae. It's just the super, super red. Right now it's just kind of a pinkish, um, but I would really love it to just be a, a dark red, you know, color to this. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's update on the Planet Reef Tank Rack. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed. And like always, until next time guys, peace.